Hello everyone. Today I'm going to continue my discussions with Islamic thinkers or thinkers about Islam. I'm very pleased today to be talking to Hamza. Welcome. Thanks for agreeing to talk to me today. Yeah, thank you. The uh, the Quran, one of the hallmarks of a believer is uh, gratefulness, gratitude. In fact, the word in Arabic for disbeliever means ungrateful, an ingrate. Hmm. Um, and and so gratitude for blessings, and then patience for trials and tribulations. And and so there's many verses in the Quran that talk about that we have raised some of you over others in privilege, as a test to show who will be the best in action. Who? What are you going to do with those privileges? How are you going to respond to those tribulations? So if you have a, a, a worldview that actually incorporates all of the problems in the world and gives them meaning, then it enables people to look at them in a very different way. Whereas if you remove that, you're stuck with just Marxist resentment okay, so, and, yeah, and yeah, envy. Yeah. So, all right, let's, I'm going to go back to your conversion because I want to understand how that happened, but I'm happy about the direction this discussion is taking. So. It seems to me that when you realize that you're, let's say, arbitrarily blessed by a certain set of advantages, now everyone is cursed with a certain set of disadvantages too, so we can take that into account. But So you're grateful for your privileges, let's say. You regard them as a gift, or maybe you regard them as something akin to grace. And then it seems to me that the appropriate thing to do is attempt to atone for them, which is that you try to make your advantages work for you and for everyone else to the best of your possible ability and then in some sense you pay you pay for for having them that way you're given a gift and then you do what you can with it you do the best you can with it and share it with people and and and, and don't try to take narrow advantage of it you said that there are, there's islamic commentary on that kind of idea and so maybe you could walk me through that a bit Gratitude, that's a very interesting one because it does seem to me that it's certainly easier on people psychologically if they're grateful for what they have rather than resentful and bitter about what they don't have. And why is that associated with belief per se, let's say, in, in Islam? Well, first of all, the gift of being itself. I'm just the, the participation in being is a great gift. And in fact, the, you know, the, the, the German word for for guilt is actually a sense of debt. And so the and the word in Arabic for religion is debt. It means debt. So we 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 have this sense of indebtedness because we've been given so much. Just just the gift of life itself is just such an extraordinary gift. And so religion, you know, in the Islamic understanding, it's it's an act of gratitude. It's you're showing gratitude for all that you've been given. And in fact, when you get reached the highest levels of our tradition, even the tribulations are seen as gifts because they're actually um, ways in which we learn. There's an unveiling that happens and great knowledge comes out of suffering. Great knowledge comes out of trials and tribulations. And so in, in, in our tradition, the highest people are those who actually are, are grateful in trials and tribulations, as well as in blessings and gifts. Because yeah. they see it all as a gift. I mean, the Quran actually says that it's God who created death and life to try you, to, to show, to reveal who is the best of you in actions. And so accepting that is, is a really great, um, is, a, is a really great gift. And and if anything, I mean, that's the gift of grace. One of, one of the great, um, uh, scholars of our tradition said that he was so burdened with with uh, his self and he went to this teacher and he when he came in he said to him all of the world is just four conditions and each of those conditions has a response the first condition is blessing and the response is gratitude the second condition is tribulation and the response is patience the third condition is obedience, and the response is humility, is to see the, the grace in that obedience. And the, and the fourth uh, circumstance 
is sinfulness and the response is repentance. So that's a taxonomy for life itself. What, what, how would you characterize the Islamic view of repentance? And pe people talk a lot about the necessity to forgive, hey, and I've thought that through fairly thoroughly as a clinical psychologist, because my experience as a clinician has been that for forgiveness to take place, generally speaking, there has to be a discussion between the parties involved, or at least a very lengthy session of thought by the person who's aggravated and offended. Well, I, it's, the Islamic tradition, like the Jewish and the Christian before, ha have this idea of repentance, transforming the mind, changing the mind. Uh, in Arabic, it's the idea of turning. And, and so there's, there's this idea that the heart turns towards disobedience, and then it has to turn back towards obedience. And so that, that turning, the, one of the names of God is Tawab in Arabic, which means the off-turning, the one who turns back when you turn to God, God turns to you. Uh, and so this idea of turning back to God is very important. And the Prophet Muhammad, you know, he taught us actually to do this at least 70 times a day. So Muslims, as a, as a practice, actually ask forgiveness. Um, preferably at least 70 times a day, just saying a stuff fit a lot. It's something that we do as a spiritual practice. And part of the reason why we pray five times a day, the Prophet ﷺ was once asked about a man who lives next to a river and he goes into it and he washes five times a day. He said, do you think that you would see any filth on him? And they said, no. And he said, that's what prayer is. It's like washing, it's like bathing in a river five times a day. I mean, one of the reasons we do lustration with uh, water is a ritual purification. So we wash our face, we purify our, our eyes and our, and our tongue. We actually rinse our mouth with water before we pray. And, and then we wash our, hand, our limbs and then our feet. And, and the idea is about really turning back to God because these gifts that we've been given, these seven limbs that we have been given are gifts from God that should be used in good. And so the idea, it, you know, it's interesting that in, in Old English, in New Testament Greek and Hebrew and Arabic, the word for sin is an archery term, mm -hmm. which means to, to miss the miss mark. Miss the mark, yes, absolutely. Right. And, 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 and so this idea, you know, uh, uh, this, this great basketball player was, was once asked what he thought about when he missed a shot. He said, too far, too short, too much to the left, too much to the right. That, that that's what sin is. It's, it's basically, we, we, there's omission or commission. We did so, too much of something, too little of something to deviate to the left or the right. And so it's finding that sweet spot of obedience uh, and being in a state of, of ritual purity. And then we have conditions. So in order for a repentance to be sound, uh, it has to be sincere. The person actually has to have a sincere repentance. It has to be done like if you're actually right. engaged and sincere, in it. Yeah. Sincere means to recognize the wrongdoing and to strive not to do it again. Would that yeah, be a definition because, of sincerity? I, yeah. It, Sincerity, the Arabic word for sincerity is related to the word for purity and untainted. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's done without ulterior motives because sometimes right. people will, will ask forgiveness and they just don't want to be cut out of the will.